Adventures of Pinocchio by Carlo Collodi. Chapter 12. Fire Eater gives Pinocchio five gold pieces for his father, Geppetto, but the marionette meets a fox and a cat and follows them. The next day, Fire Eater called Pinocchio aside and asked him, What is your father's name? Geppetto. And what is his trade? He's a woodcarver. Does he earn much? He earns so much that he never has a penny in his pockets. Just to think that in order to buy me an ABC book for school, he had to sell the only coat he owned, a coat so full of darns and patches that it was a pity. Poor fellow, I feel sorry for him. Here, take these five gold pieces. Go, give them to him with my kindest regards. Pinocchio, as may easily be imagined, thanked him a thousand times. He kissed each marionette in turn, even the officers, and, beside him with joy, set out on his homeward journey. He had gone barely half a mile when he met a lame fox and a blind cat walking together like two good friends. The lame fox leaned on the cat and the blind cat let the fox lead him along. Good morning, Pinocchio, said the fox, greeting him courteously. How do you know my name? asked the marionette. I know your father well. Where have you seen him? I saw him yesterday standing at the door of his house. And what was he doing? He was in his shirt sleeves, trembling with cold. Poor father! But after today, God willing, he will he will suffer no longer. Why? Because I have become a rich man. You a rich man? said the fox, and he began to laugh out loud. The cat was laughing also, but tried to hide it by stroking his long whiskers. There's nothing to laugh at, cried Pinocchio angrily. I'm very sorry to make your mouth water, but these, as you know, are five new gold pieces. At the cheerful twinkle of the gold, the fox unconsciously held out his paw that was supposed to be lame, and the cat opened wide his two eyes till they looked like live coals, but he closed them again so quickly that Pinocchio did not notice. May I ask, inquired the fox, what are you going to do? Do with all that money. First of all, answered the marionette, I want to buy a fine new coat for my father, a coat of gold and silver with diamond buttons. After that, I'll buy an ABC book for myself. For yourself? For myself. I want to go to school and study hard. Look at me, said the fox. For the silly reason of wanting to study, I lost a paw. Look at me, said the cat. For the same foolish reason, I have lost the sight of both eyes. At that moment, a blackbird, perched on the fence along the road, called out sharp and clear, Pinocchio, do not listen to bad advice. If you do, you will be sorry. Poor little blackbird. If he had only kept his words to himself. In the twinkling of an eyelid, the cat leaped on him and ate him feathers and all. After eating the bird, he cleaned his whiskers, closed his eyes, and became blind once more. Poor Blackbird, said Pinocchio to the cat. Why Why did you kill him? I killed him to teach him a lesson. He talks too much. Next time, he will keep his words to himself. By this time, the three companions had walked a long distance. Suddenly, the fox stopped in his tracks and, turning to the marionette, said to him, Do you want to double your gold pieces? What do you mean? Do you want one thousand? Two thousand gold pieces for a miserable five? Yes, but how? The way is very easy. Instead of returning home, come with us. And where will you take me? To the city of Simple Simons. Pinocchio thought a while and said firmly, No, I don't want to go. Home is near, and I'm going to where Father is waiting for me. How unhappy he must that be that I have not yet returned. I've been a bad son, and the talking cricket was right when he said a disobedient boy cannot be happy in this world. I've learned this at my own expense. Even last night in the theater, when a fire eater, brr, the shivers were up and down my back at the mere thought of it. Well then, said the fox, if you really want to go home, go ahead. But you'll be sorry. You'll be sorry, repeated the cat. Think well, Pinocchio. You are turning your back on Dame Fortune. On Dame Fortune, repeated the cat. Tomorrow your five gold pieces will be two thousand. Two thousand, repeated the cat. But how could they possibly be so many? asked Pinocchio wonderingly. I'll explain, said the fox. You must know that, just outside the city of Simple Simons, 
There is a blessed field called the Field of Wonders. In this field, you dig up a hole, and in the hole, you bury a gold piece. After covering up the hole with earthy water, well, sprinkle a bit of salt on it and go to bed. During the night, the gold piece sprouts, grows, blossoms, and the next morning, you find a beautiful tree that is loaded with gold pieces. So that if I were to bury my five gold pieces, cried Pinocchio with growing wonder, next morning I should find how many? It is simple to figure out, answered the fox. Why, you could you can figure it out on your fingers. Granted that each piece gives you five hundred, multiply five hundred by five. Next morning you would five, find twenty five hundred new sparkling gold pieces. Fine, fine, cried Pinocchio, dancing about with joy. And as soon as I have them, I shall keep two thousand for myself, and the other five hundred I'll give to you too. A gift for us, cried the fox, pretending to be insulted. Why, of course not. Of course not," repeated the cat. "We do not work for gain," answered the fox. "We work only to enrich others." "To enrich others," repeated the cat. "What good people," thought Pinocchio to himself, and forgetting his father, the new coat, the ABC book, and all his good resolutions, he said to the fox and to the cat, "Let us go. I'm with you." Adventures of Pinocchio by Carlo Collodi. Chapter Thirteen, The Inn of the Red Lobster. Cat and Fox and Marionette walked and walked and walked. At last, toward evening, dead tired, they came to the Inn of the Red Lobster. Let us stop here for a while," said the fox. "To eat a bite and rest for a few hours. At midnight, we'll start out again. For at dawn tomorrow, we must be at the Field of Wonders." They went into the inn, and all three sat down at the same table. However, not one of them was very hungry. The poor cat felt very weak, and he was able to eat only thirty-five mullets with tomato sauce and four portions of this tripe of tripe with cheese. Moreover, as he was so in need of strength, he had to have four more helpings of butter and cheese. The fox, after a great deal coaxing, tried his best to eat a little. But the doctor had put him on diet, and he had to be satisfied with his small hair dressed with a. Dozen young and tender spring chickens. After the hare, he orders some partridges, a few peasants, a couple of rabbits, and a dozen frogs and lizards. That was all. He felt ill, he said, and could not eat another bite. Pinocchio ate least of all. He asked for a bite of bread and a few nuts, and then hardly touched them. The poor fellow, with his mind on the feudal wonders, was suffering from a gold piece indigestion. Supper over, the fox said to the innkeeper. Give us two good rooms, one for Mister Pinocchio and the other for me and my friend. Before starting out, we'll take a little nap. Remember to call us at midnight sharp, for we must continue on our journey. Yes, sir," answered the innkeeper, winking in a knowing way at the fox and the cat, as if to say, "I understand." As soon as Pinocchio was in bed, he f- fell fast asleep and began to dream. He dreamed that he was in the middle of a field. The field was full of vines, heavy with grapes. The grapes were no other than gold pieces, which twinkled merrily as they swayed in the wind. They seemed to say, "Let him who wants us take us." Just as Pinocchio stretched out his hand to take a handful of them, he was awakened by three loud knocks at the door. It was the innkeeper who had come to tell him that midnight had struck. "Are my friends ready?" the marionette asked him. Indeed, yes. They went two hours ago. Why in such a hurry? Unfortunately, the cat received a telegram which said that his firstborn was suffering from chilblains and on the point of death. He could not even wait to say goodbye to you. Did they pay for the supper? How could they do such a thing? Being people of great refinement, they did not want to offend you so deeply as not to allow you the honor of paying the bill. Too bad. That offense would have been more than pleasing to me. Said Pinocchio, scratching his head. Where, where did my good friend say they would wait for me? He added, at the Field of Wonders at sunrise tomorrow morning. Pinocchio paid a gold piece for the three suppers, and started on his way toward the field that was to make him a rich man. He walked on, not knowing where he was going, for it was dark, so dark that not a thing was visible. Round about him, not a leaf stirred. 
A few bats skimmed his nose now and then and scared him half to death. Once or twice he shouted, Who goes there? And the far away hills echoed back to him. Who goes there? Who goes there? Who goes As he walked, Pinocchio noticed a tiny insect glimmering on the trunk of a tree, a small being that glowed with a soft, pale light. Who are you? he asked. I'm the ghost of the talking cricket, answered the little being in a faint voice that sounded as if it had come from a faraway world. What do you want? asked the marionette. I want to give you a few words of good advice. Return home and give the four gold pieces you have left your poor father, who is weeping because he has not seen you for many a day. Tomorrow my father will be a rich man, for these four gold pieces will become two thousand. Don't listen to those who promise you wealth overnight, my boy. As a rule, they are either fools or swindlers. Listen to me and go home. But I want to go on. The hour's late. I want to go on. The night is very dark. I want to go on. The road is dangerous. I want to go on. Remember that boys who insist on having their own way sooner or later come to grief. The same nonsense. Goodbye, Cricket. Goodbye, Pinocchio, and may heaven preserve you from the sad. There was silence for a moment, and the light of the talking cricket disappeared suddenly as if someone had snuffed it out. Once again, the road was plunged into darkness.